So the renowned game developer named Hideo Kojima just stated that he wants to become an AI and stick around after his death. It should come as absolutely no surprise to anyone who's familiar with his work that Kojima would say this, as his games tend to have a very dark and sci-fi-esque aesthetic. To illustrate this, look no further than his hit game Death Stranding. The game which follows the story of a post-apocalyptic delivery man named Sam who must navigate a decaying world while carrying a valuable and mysterious cargo has been described as a work of art that pushes the boundaries of sci-fi. But today, we're not here to talk about his games. We're here to see if it really is possible to live on after death as an artificial intelligence. Welcome to my channel, TFC Tech, where we discuss fascinating and thought-provoking issues in science and technology. Today, we're going to discuss the reality of Kojima's idea and ask the question, is it really possible to live on as an artificial intelligence system after you die? So if you're as excited about this as I am, hit that like button and the subscribe button and let's get into it. So before we get started, let's give a little bit of background on who Hideo Kojima is. Kojima is a Japanese video game designer, director, and writer best known for creating the Metal Gear series. He has been working in the video game industry for over three decades and has become one of the most influential figures in the world of gaming. In addition to the Metal Gear series, Kojima has also worked on a number of other projects including the survival horror game Silent Hill and the action-adventure game Zone of the Enders. His latest game, Death Stranding, actually won the award for Best Game Direction back in 2019. But overall, this man has had a huge impact on the world of video games and likely will for years to come. Or if he has anything to say about it, for centuries to come. Enter IGN's interview with Kojima just a couple days ago. When asked what kind of philosophies he would like to leave behind at Kojima Productions over the very long term, he responded, That's a good question. I've never really thought about that. I'll keep leading so long as I'm around, and all that matters to me is that our roots when it comes to creation are kept intact. But you know, I'll probably become an AI and stick around. You need to be stimulated in lots of different ways if you want to keep creating new things. So I imagine I'll keep collaborating with others and taking in new things even if I'm an AI. So based off that interview, it looks like Kojima wants to create an artificial intelligence copy of himself that can be used to continue leading game development at Kojima Productions. But with that sentiment, a number of important questions are raised. Number one, is it even possible to create an artificial intelligence that can perfectly mimic a human to the point where it's indistinguishable? Number two, instead of creating a copy, would it be possible to download a human mind to a machine in order to preserve a person's consciousness? And number three, if we did download the mind, would it still be the same person or would it simply be a copy? Would the consciousness still be preserved? These are the three questions that immediately came to my mind when reading Kojima's interview, and I believe they are very important to the discussion around living on after death as an artificial intelligence. So without further ado, let's dive in. So question one, can we create an artificial intelligence that can perfectly mimic a human to the point where it's indistinguishable? There's a couple different ways to approach this, but instead of speculating what might be possible, let's look at what's already been done. Back in 2021, Joshua Barbeau, a 33-year-old man overcome with grief from the loss of his girlfriend nine years prior, used GPT-3, a conversational AI language model, to try and recreate a conversation with her. To help explain this story, let's reference an article from the New York Post, which reads, Still overwhelmed by grief after losing 23-year-old girlfriend Jessica Barrera in 2012, Barbeau said he used her old text messages and Facebook posts to help the chatbot mimic his late lover's writing voice. Of course it's me, the chatbot he named after Pereira told him at the start of their talk. Who else could it be? I'm the girl you are madly in love with. How is it possible that you even have to ask? His online Jessica wrote. You died, he replied, just for the chatbot to reply. That doesn't sound right. How can you talk to dead people? So as you can see, this kind of technology already exists in a terrifying form. Language models have advanced to the point where if given enough source material to work with, their AI systems can mimic the mannerisms and habits of real people down to a scarily good degree. Now obviously this man was influenced by his grief, but despite that, it begs the question, just how good will these chatbots be in the very near future? And by the time Hideo Kojima gets ready to pass on, will they be good enough to truly replace him? If given enough time, it definitely seems possible. If you'd like to learn more about language models and the emergence of ChatGPT, check out my previous video where we go deep on the future implications of this technology, because there is seriously some scary stuff that is about to happen because of chatbots like this. But let's get back to the video. We not only live in a world now where AI can replicate speech as text, 
but also where it can replicate facial movements and even voices. Deepfakes are defined as a video of a person in which their face or body has been digitally altered so that they appear to be someone else, typically used maliciously or to spread false information. There are some seriously good videos of presidents saying something they would absolutely never say, and if you didn't know it was a deepfake, you wouldn't be able to tell. In fact, this technology is so good that government entities are actively monitoring the rise of deepfakes and treating them as a threat to democracy. So just like with the language models, as the years go on, this technology might get so good that it becomes possible we get Kojima's voice, speech pattern, and even his face replicated by AI. Question 2 asks, instead of creating a copy, would it be possible to download a human mind into a machine in order to preserve a person's consciousness? This is actually a topic that I've discussed in depth about in a previous video of mine, which I will have linked below. So if you'd like an in-depth analysis of the possibility of uploading a mind to a machine, I highly recommend you check that video out. But today, let's start with a general summary to answer this question. In order to successfully upload a consciousness from a living individual into a machine, a couple different things would need to be possible. First, you would need to have a complete map of the physical structure of the person's brain and all of their neural connections in order to accurately host the thought patterns needed to replicate said consciousness. And this is something scientists have actually already started working on. The assumption is that our minds are nothing more than data and a series of programmed responses to stimuli. The same way computers store data and use that data to spit out certain outcomes within defined parameters, our brains process the world around us and allow us to behave and react according to previously learned behaviors. So with that being said, it should be theoretically possible to at least mimic and map out the quote-unquote code that our brain operates on. The human brain is essentially a fleshy supercomputer and the world's most complex biological mechanism. It houses 86 billion neurons which process and send out information to the rest of the body. 100 billion neurons each fire off about 5 to 50 action potentials every second which allow you to process your environment, your balance, your senses, and what actions you might take according to this information. So theoretically, if we could have all of this mapped out and then train an AI on brain signals recorded from certain stimuli, it may be possible to at least somewhat emulate a human's thought patterns artificially. That being said, scientists have already started working on progress to successfully map brains, starting with a roundworm which they were able to fully map in less than a month. A roundworm is a tiny parasitic creature, meaning orders of magnitude more massive maps are needed to get to the level of complex animals. Where complications come in is with the sheer size of data needed to store these maps. A mouse's brain, for example, is 1000 times bigger and requires an exabyte of data, roughly a billion gigabytes. Mapping an entire human brain would need a data set that is a further 1,000 times larger. A zettabyte, which is comparable to the amount of digital content generated in a year by the planet Earth. It's also worth considering that this data set would only be a map of the neural connections, not taking into account the far more complex systems that work through the multitude of neural connections. So the prospect of uploading a consciousness in the sense that we hope to and understand it is in every sense of the word a monstrous undertaking that we currently do not and most likely will not for hundreds of years have the capacity to do. But like I said, if you want to learn more about this, go check out my previous video on the topic. I think you'll definitely learn a lot from it. But let's get back to today's discussion. The final question asks, if we did download the mind, would it still be the same person or would it simply be a copy? If Kojima wanted to live on as an artificial intelligence, would it really be him? Or would it be language models impersonating him like we talked about before? This point calls into question the existence of the soul and the reality of human consciousness. In order to answer this, you must ask yourself, are humans more than the sum of their parts of their biology? Are we simply a program written into the flesh of our brains? Or does something lie deeper, something that can't be mimicked no matter how detailed the imitation? Instead of leaving the answer up to ourselves, I asked ChatGPT what it thinks about consciousness and this is what it had to say. Consciousness is a complex and multifaceted phenomenon that is not fully understood by scientists or philosophers. There is still much debate and disagreement about the nature of consciousness and how it arises from the activity of the brain. However, there is a general consensus that consciousness is the subjective experience of being aware of one's own thoughts, feelings, and surroundings. In conclusion, while it is generally accepted that consciousness is related to the activity of neurons in the brain, the precise nature of consciousness and how it arises from brain activity is not fully understood and is the subject of ongoing research and debate. It is not currently possible to say with certainty whether there are aspects of consciousness that cannot be explained through biology alone. 
So like I said before, the question ultimately lies with you and what you believe about the soul. If Hideo Kojima does decide to live on, I ultimately believe he will be nothing more than a copy of the once living game director. And while it may certainly be possible to create this copy, his soul, I believe, will simply be lost to time. So to wrap things up, we absolutely will have the technology in the next half century to create a very convincing AI copy of Hideo Kojima that may still allow him to lead the game direction at Kojima Studios for years possibly after his death. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. What do you guys think about all this? And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel as we are very close to being monetized by YouTube, and I'll catch you in the next one.